Hello everyone, my name is Kate, also known as Hoop with Kate on Instagram, TikTok, and wherever else online. I am the owner of Hoopy Happy Well, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over 10 moves that every hooper should know. So when I say like a move that every hooper should know, I mean that these moves are really foundational and they have a lot of different variations that you can do. So the first move that I'm going to be going over is called a weave. And it looks something like this. This is a basic forward weave. What you're going to do is have the hoop out in front of you and you're going to grab the hoop with your thumb facing up. Now what you're going to do is just turn your thumb facing down. So you're gonna to wanna to start the move in this position right here, like this. And all you're going to do is create a figure eight or an infinity sign with your thumb. So you're not going to be using your whole arm to be doing this move. You're just going to have your thumb face down. You're gonna go over to your opposite side first, go down, go back up, cross over to your dominant side, up and back down. So you can see that I'm doing this move strictly with my wrist like this. So the move is going to end up looking like this. So it looks like this without the hoop. You can see that you're creating a figure eight with your hand. You're not bringing your arm all the way down and back up. You're just going to use your wrist and create that figure eight in front of you. So off to the side, it's gonna look like this. Weaves are really great for transitional moves. In addition to the forward weave, there is the reverse weave. There is a reel, and there is a no weave weave. But to start, let's just get down the basic weave. So the next move I'm going to go over is a lasso, and that move looks like this, or it looks like this. So all you're going to do is have the hoop out in front of you with your palm on the bottom facing down, and you're just going to rock the hoop side to side like this. As the hoop is on a downswing on either side, you're just going to open up your hand, Twist your hand so now that your thumb is facing up and make sure that you have your thumb facing up so that it keeps the hoop from traveling up your arm. As the hoop is starting motion, all you're going to do is bounce up and down like this, the micro bounce in your arm, maybe your knees, to keep the hoop going. So this is a basic vertical plane lasso. Horizontal plane lasso, or something like this, above your head. You're going to start with the hoop out in front of you. Take your dominant hand, reach underneath the hoop with your palm facing up. Now you're going to bring it over to your non-dominant side across your body and keeping the hoop as flat as possible, you're going to raise the hoop up and above your head. And as the hoop is above your head, you're going to release and point your fingers up. Once the hoop starts moving, you're just going to wave your hand like this or back and forth to keep the hoop in motion. And again, you're gonna want your thumb to be pointed out so that it keeps the hoop from traveling down your arm. Again, here is the vertical plane lasso and then the horizontal plane. So the next move is a toss. A basic toss looks something like this. It just gives you a moment to just pause and transition into a new move, take a little breather. It gives you time to just recollect yourself and start off fresh. So a toss looks like this. What I usually like to do is have my opposite hand out in front of me as a guide where I'm going to be tossing the hoop. Take the hoop in your dominant hand and you're gonna grab the top of the hoop just like this. Your thumb is gonna be pointed over to your dominant side. You're just going to swing the hoop down underneath your opposite arm. And as the hoop is going up, you're going to want to allow the hoop to arch over to your dominant side again, so that it can create that rainbow effect over to your dominant side. So again, have your opposite hand out like this. You're just going to toss underneath and back up and catch over to your opposite side. So again, have the hoop out in front of you with your thumb facing over to your opposite side. Put your opposite arm out, bring the hoop underneath, and aim to your dominant side. As the hoop is going up, 
from underneath that arm, you're just going to release and then catch. So this move is really great, like I said, to kind of pause and give your mind a break so that you can transition into another move. So the next move I'm going to go over is something called a hinge and that move looks like this. So you're going to grab a hoop on any part and all you're going to do is bring whatever side your arm is on and bring it over to your opposite side. So in order to do this move, all you're going to do is take wherever your hand is and you're going to swing it over to the opposite side. And as you're doing this, you're going to be swinging the hoop out in front of you as you bring your hand over to whatever side that you're going to be traveling across, like this. So the idea of this move is to keep it in the single plane right here and you're just going to hinge And if you're down here, you're going to hinge up and back down. So you can see that the plane is kind of staying in this location right here, here, and here. Again, this is a hinge. So you're just going to grab the hoop on any side and you're just going to bring your hand over to your opposite side while swinging the hoop outward. So you can see here, I'm swinging the hoop out and bringing my hands over to the opposite side. If my hand is on the bottom here, I'm going to swing out and bring it up. Swing out and bring it down. So that is a hinge. The next move I'm going to be going over is something called a fold, and it's going to look like this. So for this move, you're going to be using your whole arm to do this movement. So take the hoop out in front of you and grab it over to your dominant side with your hand on the outside of the hoop, palm is facing towards your opposite side. So the fold is going to look like this. You're going to bring the hoop over to your opposite side and then fold it back over. This feels a little bit awkward when you're doing this, but as you're doing it with speed, it's not gonna feel as uncomfortable. You're going to bring your hand back over to your dominant side. So the move is going to look like this and back. You can go into the opposite direction where you're going to bring it up and back, over and back. So the hoop is swinging over to your dominant side, like this, down and up. And the other way, down and up, over and over. So these folds are really great when you're trying to transition from horizontal planes to possibly a vertical plane like this. Because you're here, fold, now you're in a vertical plane like this. Fold over, now you're in a horizontal. The next move is something called an isolation and the move looks like this. So the idea of the isolation is to create this effect that the hoop is kind of floating in space. So what I like to do is have my hand on the bottom of the hoop, my dominant hand on the bottom of the hoop, and I'm going to bring my arm, my whole arm, all the way up. So you can see that the plane is staying right here. I'm, I'm in the frame of the hoop, and I'm going to bring my hand all the way up like this. Once you feel it in your shoulders and you can't go up anymore, you're going to allow the hoop to roll over the back of your hand like this. You're not gonna be grabbing it down here, but you're going to open up your grip, let it roll over the top of your hand, and you're just going to re-grip the hoop like this. So you're gonna roll, re-grip. As the hoop is rolling over the top of your hand, you're gonna to wanna to kind of push it up as you're releasing so that you can keep that hoop in that plane up here. You're gonna have your grip on the hoop down here, palm facing down. Use your entire arm all the way up. You can see from this side, I'm bringing my arm all the way up. And as my arm is all the way up here, I can feel it in my shoulder. I'm going to release, re-grip, push up as you release and re-grip so that you can keep that plane in this part right here and you're going to re-grip and then bring the hoop all the way back down. The sectional kind of helps so you can see where the hoop is moving and you can see that it's remaining in this plane right here. So you're gonna bring it all the way up, release, re-grip, and bring it all the way back down. So isolations are huge. There are so many variations that you can do with isolations. This is a basic isolation. This is a two-handed isolation. This is a tracing isolation. There are so many variations that you can do with isolations, but the basic one 
is this one right here. So the next move I'm going to be going over is something called a chest roll, and it looks like this. This move is a lot easier than it looks. All you have to do is kind of set your body up and the release that you're going to do with your wrist is going to do all the work for you. So you're gonna have your hoop out to the side, to your dominant side. I'm gripping the outside of the hoop. And take note that my arm is remaining straight as I'm doing this motion. I am just going to rock the hoop with my wrist up and towards my forearm. As the hoop is touching my, like about to touch my forearm, I'm just going to open up my hand but your posture is going to play a major role when it comes to getting this moved out. So you're going to want to open up your chest, lean back, and you're going to want to get your head out of the way as you're doing this roll. So you're going to create this flat plane for the hoop to travel across from one arm over to the other. And something that really helps is keeping your gaze on the hoop so they can get your head out of the way as it travels from one side to the other, and you can also see where the hoop is going so that you can catch it over on your opposite side. So again, you're just going to rock the hoop up, keep your elbow nice and straight because you want that straight and flat plane for the hoop to travel across. As the hoop is about to touch your forearm, you're just going to release, follow the hoop with your gaze, and that's gonna keep your head out of the way as it travels from one side to the other. And as it comes over to your opposite side, you're just going to grab it with your opposite hand. So again, it's gonna look something like this. So that is a basic chest roll. There are a bunch of different rolls um, that you can build off of that. So there is the back roll, and then there is a C roll. But the idea of all of these rolls are to keep that flat plane either on your chest or on your back so the hoop has a, a smooth surface for you to travel, for it to travel across. So the next thing that I'm going to go over is something called an escalator, and that looks like this. All you're going to do is take your hoop, you're going to place it up against your back just like this, and you're going to lift up your opposite leg so that it creates a crevice for the hoop to travel across. Now from here, you're going to seat belt or windshield wipe this hoop over your body like this, so the hoop should travel down and across your body. You're gonna take your dominant hand and you're just going to twist your wrist down and across towards your dominant side. So your thumb is facing here, now you're just going to point it down. As the hoop is being pointed down, it should be landing in this crevice right here that you created, or at least a little bit near it, and gravity is going to pull the hoop down. As it's coming back down, you're going to release, and that crevice is gonna allow it to naturally travel down your body like a spiral. So again, you're going to release, and you're going to catch the hoop with your dominant hand immediately after you release the hoop. So you're going to have your hand up here, windshield wipe down, bring your arm down, and catch over to your dominant side. So this is a basic escalator. There are a bunch of different types of escalators. There's this folded escalator. There are these um, reverse escalators or these hug escalators. Uh, and this little extra folded variation of this escalator. But again, the basic escalator is having it travel down your body in this spiral um, motion. Just going to catch it over to your dominant side. So the next move that I'm going to be going over is something called a wedgie. That move looks like this. So this move can be a little bit tricky, especially if you don't have a hoop that is the right size. You don't want one that is super big where it's landing like right in between your crotch right here because you need to have it land in the spot in between your thighs so that you can use your thighs as kind of a bouncing off point as it's going back and forth like this. So you're gonna take your hoop and you're gonna put it up against your dominant leg like this and you're going to take your opposite leg, step in front, and then put your foot right next to your dominant leg. So you're going to step in front, step inside of the hoop, so you're locking the hoop in between your legs, and you're just going to plant your foot back down right next to your dominant leg. Now what you're gonna do is, to help you a little bit, you can pull the hoop back like this, so you can see that it's kind of popping up behind me to kind of use it as a recoil or as like a slingshot to start this move. As you release the hoop, 
it's going to start swinging outwards and you're going to use your dominant leg to lift the hoop up and across. So it's gonna look like this, you're gonna lift it up and across. And you really wanna give it that power so it can really swing and bring the hoop up against your back like this. So again, pull the hoop back and you're going to lift your leg up and across. As the hoop is traveling up, you're gonna plant this foot back down and you're going to do the same thing with your opposite leg. You're gonna lift it up and across. You wanna do this right as the hoop is hitting your back so that it gets like that optimal point and that um, pressure up against your thigh so that it can really get a good swing. And you're going to bring it down and across. So again, you're gonna pull the hoop back. You're gonna lift up your dominant leg. As the hoop is up here, you're going to bring your opposite leg up and across. To keep this move going, you need to get into a good rhythm. And you don't want to stop because once you do, the momentum of the hoop is going to slow down and you really need to use that in order to get like a good rhythm. Another tip that helps with getting this move down is not kicking your feet up and across. You're literally just lifting up and across like this. So you're not lifting your feet, you're just lifting your knee up and across. And as you plant your foot back down, you want it to land in the same spot that you started in. So you're up and across, down, up and across, down. So you wanna keep that motion nice and steady so that you can get a good rhythm of the wedge. So again, it looks like this. You can see that my feet are landing in the same spot. I'm just lifting my knee up and across and I'm getting into a good rhythm to keep that hoop moving. So the last and final move that I'm going to be going over is something called a coin flip. Ooh, something called a coin flip. It looks something like this. This move is essentially a toss, but using a part of your body as an axis. So you're going to have your opposite hand out like this, take your hoop in your dominant hand and have it in this vertical plane right here out in front of you. And you're just going to swing the hoop back and forth like this. Don't have a really strong grip as you're doing it. You want it to really swing and kind of allow gravity to kind of do its thing. And as the hoop is on its upswing and makes contact, you're going to tighten up your grip. So you're gonna be here, it's gonna to touch your forearm like this, and you're gonna tighten up your grip. As you're tightening up your grip, you're going to want to release and pull the hoop down so that it creates kind of this recoil and spin around your arm. So what I mean by that is take note of my dotted hand as I'm doing this, I'm here, and you can see that I'm kind of flicking the hoop down as I am releasing it, like this. Bring the hoop up like this, the hoop is going to travel up with you. So you want to bring this hoop down, this part of the hoop down, so they can create that initial spin. And as it hits your arm, it's going to use your arm as an access to spin across. So again, you're just going to swing the hoop down and across. As the hoop makes contact with your hand, you're gonna tighten up your grip with your dominant hand, release and flick down like this. So this motion can be done on your arm, it can be done on your neck, on your leg like this, but that motion is going to remain the same. You're going to flick up or swing up, flick the hoop down and release so you can get that nice little spiral around your hands. All right, everyone, uh, thank you for watching this video. That is 10 tricks that every hooper should know. Um, you can build off of all of these moves. There are a ton of different variations for each of these moves, and then you can combine them into really cool combos. So these are some basic moves um, that I learned at the beginning of my journey, and there are different types of variations that you can do for each of them that can really expand your flow. If this video helped you, be sure to follow me either on Instagram, TikTok, or here on YouTube and subscribe, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> if you want more videos like this, leave a comment down below, like this video, share it with a friend, um, and subscribe to my channel. Okay, thank you and happy hooping.